the deepest sea trench known to earth is the Mariana Trench, bro. And today, this deep sea probe made a chilling discovery at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Oh, we're going to get into it, all right? So, if you knew, you know what to do, man. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join the fam. And let's check this out. Our world is rife with mysteries and enigmas. Through the years, a myriad of wondrous events have occurred and thousands of amazing discoveries have been made. We can never be quite sure what lies beyond the horizon. Between archaeological wonders and the rapid development of technology, there is an unbound potential for our future. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at recent discoveries. China's acoustic probe heard sound from the Mariana Trench. Have you ever wondered how much we can hear in the depth of the oceans? Well, in 2017, a team of scientists from China conducted China's first acoustic test in the Mariana Trench, quite literally the deepest part of our oceans. The research team from Northwestern Polytechnical University in Shanxi province carried out this experiment in deep water sound communication in a small valley known as Challenger Deep, in the southern end of the Mariana Trench, approximately 11 kilometers under the surface. A 10 kilometer acoustic probe, fitted with sensors capable of detecting sounds 9.3 kilometers away, was stationed in the area. This was the first acoustic test carried out here by a Chinese team, and the second ever conducted, though the Mariana Trench has had many visitors over the years, including both manned and unmanned trips beginning with the US submersible trip in 1960. The Mariana Trench, or more specifically Challenger Deep, is approximately 320 kilometers southwest from Guam. Understanding the role of sound under the sea is vital in understanding more about marine life and could have military applications too. With the absence of light at such deep levels underwater, a key component to communication and navigation between sea creatures are the noises made. But a okay, now that makes sense. Because I was wondering, like, why are they so hard pressed to to use sound? But I get it. We've we've often talked about the darkness down there. It's very very dark, bro. Like scarily dark down there, right? So what other element, or you know what I mean? What other way to try to see what we have down there is sound using sound, since we can't use sight since we have none you know what i mean but believe it believe you me i know they're working on some type of technology bro to get down there stay down there for long periods of time and have enough light and to be able to just probe and go and send back feed video feed of what we're actually seeing would it really lit up you know what i mean that's gonna be that's gonna be something to witness Research possibility with greater potential is that by understanding the underwater acoustic characteristics we can expect to hear, we can give this technology a role in the military. If we are able to conduct a great deal of deep sea acoustic research, we can apply this to the development of sonar technology, in turn facilitating better anti-submarine and warfare equipment and abilities. The research team left six acoustic sensors in the Mariana Trench, so that information on ambient noise or the background, subtle sounds, can be gathered and data can be obtained for a year. The sensors were retrieved a year later, in the November of 2018. This year-long data collection involved researchers from the Ocean University of China and the Institute of Acoustics and the Chinese Academy of Sciences. This research has a number of benefits and is incredibly fascinating, from more advanced technology to better understanding marine life. The focus on deep sea scientific exploration is not short-lived and was listed in 2020 by Beijing as a key project in an upcoming five-year plan. Will it help with discovery though? That's what, come on, we, we know it's only a small percentage of the ocean has been discovered, right? So that's what I wanna hear more so of. It's gonna aid in, of course, understanding marine life. 
I get that. I'm cool with that. But discovering more is what I want to see us do, bro. Because y'all know what I'm hunting. Chinese scientists discover giant viruses in the Mariana Trench. Within the past five years, a research team based in Shanghai extracted a batch of giant viruses from deep within the Mariana Trench. The findings excited a lot of scientists since they have not before found large viruses that far deep. Why does that excite y'all? That's actually something I didn't want to hear. There also has not been that much successful exploration of the Mariana Trench. Various teams attempted to retrieve viral samples from the trench over the past few years, each failing due to technical difficulty and challenges. The Mariana Trench is a crescent-shaped trench in the Western Pacific Ocean that measures about 2,550 kilometers in length and 69 kilometers in width. It is the deepest ocean trench in the world, with the maximum depth reaching 10,984 miles. You could place Mount Everest, the tallest mountain on Earth, in the trench, and it would still sit under two kilometers of water. The researchers took the virus sample from Challenger Deep, which is the deepest known point in the Earth's seabed. This slot-shaped valley sits at the southern end of the trench. There are nearly 1,086 bars of pressure sitting above this point, increasing the water density to 4.96% and keeping the temperature at 1 to 4 degrees Celsius. We have been able to conduct measurements with manned and remotely operated deep diving submersibles and benthic landers. This trench point has more than 1,071 times the standard atmospheric pressure exerted on it than we do at sea level. It is challenging for any complex organism to survive at these depths due to the difficult living conditions. Giant viruses, though, are pretty abundant at these extreme depths. In fact, they are rarer in other atmospheric pressure conditions. Five years ago, the research ship Jian Jian successfully obtained enough sample material from Challenger Deep to extract genome sequences from 15 different virus species and over 100 types of microorganisms. The team discovered that some species were even larger than a bacterium. They also found mimiviruses within the sediment, which is a species that uses amoeba as its host. The Shanghai team attempted to revive the viruses, although they were unable to. They did manage to raise over 2,000 strains of microorganisms using a high-pressure lab environment. They published their results in the July 2021 issue of Genome Biology, a popular biology journal. The scientists discovered a bit more about mimiviruses due to this sample, despite how small it was. Mimiviruses are intriguing. They can easily be mistaken for bacteria since they have hairy fibers and bodies. They can reach up to 700 nanometers wide and be seen by the naked eye. The genome found in this virus is just as complex. It has over 1.2 million base pairs, far more than any other virus we know of. The Our curiosity tends to get us in a lot of hot water situations, bro. We need to stop being curious. Stop being curious. Now, I know doing these extraditions and different things like that, man, we're going to uncover things that we may not have wanted to uncover. We know it comes with the territory. But once we uncover it, we ain't got to pull it out and research it and test it and do all kind of different things. Let's just leave it where it is. You know what I mean? Leave it alone. Novel coronavirus has 40 times fewer pairs. We have seen them cause tissue damage in mammals during experiments, but none have caused direct harm to humans so far. Most viruses are simple parasites that depend on a host. Surprisingly, Mimiviruses contain productive protein production and metabolism genes that are typically only found in independent life forms. The leading theory is that mimiviruses underwent reverse evolution and changed from microbes to viruses. They still retained these productive functions to survive at such extreme depths and living conditions, though. Scientists hypothesize that these genes help the hosts break down nutrients faster. These remain theories, though, because the research team was unable to revive the viruses. They are eager to gather more samples and data to conduct more thorough investigations and better understand unknown viral strains. Studying genetic information is crucial for new drugs and biological innovation, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Learning about natural viruses can help in our defense against the coronavirus and other strains.
The Vela Incident The Vela satellite is located near the Prince Edward Islands in the Indian Ocean. It was constructed as a reaction to the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, which ensured that nuclear reactors or explosions could not be tested anywhere due to the deadly and detrimental effects of nuclear energy. The Vela satellite is able to detect nuclear explosions and send signals to intelligence agencies to warn them of the presence of dangerous and illegal nuclear energy. The Vela satellite is equipped with technology that can detect X-rays, I don't even think we begin to know <laughs> everything we have at our disposal. Bro, did you just hear what that thing can do? I, I, like, we, we don't even know. They keep it so much from us. Trons and gamma rays by using bang meter sensors. It is an extremely advanced piece of technology and essential for both human and environmental safety. On September 22nd, 1979, the Vela satellite detected the infamous double flash indicating that a nuclear explosion had occurred. This detection on the satellite is now commonly known as the South Atlantic Flash. The flash lit up the sky not only once, but twice, and was remarked as an incredible natural event. However, the true cause of the double flash remains a mystery. The United States and other countries alike predicted that the Vela satellite flash might have occurred due to natural phenomenon such as a meteor crash or lightning strike. To investigate this further, meteorological technology was introduced into study but was unable to detect whether nature was responsible for this. This technology was unable to prove the exact cause for the detonation. However, it did show that a wind had occurred over the southern Indian Ocean that might have carried nuclear explosive radiation or chemicals to certain parts of Australia. After an investigation from the United States Department of Defense within the Indian Ocean and surrounding countries, they predicted that it is possible that a nuclear test had occurred within the region of South Africa or Israel, but there was not enough evidence to conclude that a nuclear threat was present. There are several conspiracies as to why the Vela satellite detected a nuclear explosion. Investigators believe that the United States might be covering up the reality that Israel and South Africa might have access to nuclear power and that they might be working together to create nuclear weapons. These same investigators claim to have evidence that the United States Department of Defense came across conclusive evidence that a nuclear explosion from these regions really did occur but that they chose to ignore it, to not draw attention to their international conflicts with the region. Recognizing that Israel and South Africa might share in nuclear power is a dangerous idea for the United States. There are certain ulterior motives for the United States to disguise this information from the general public. However, upon further investigation into South Africa's nuclear power industry, officials believe that the South African government could not have made such a powerful nuclear explosive within the time frame that it went off because their access to nuclear power at the time was limited. South Africa was also a part of the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. Because of this, they allowed foreign parties to view their classified documents revealing the kind of nuclear access they had. Because South Africa seems clean on its own, it gives precedent to the possibility that they collaborated with Israel to test this nuclear explosive. The United States has yet to confirm or deny this possibility. Archaeologists have discovered a lost civil war tunnel under Alcatraz prison. The Alcatraz prison has gone down in history as one of the world's most infamous prisons. The small island it is placed on was once home to a lighthouse, then a military fortress, and eventually the prison that housed some of the era's most dangerous criminals. Nowadays, and that's the last thing you want to hear, a place that once housed some of the most dangerous criminals had a tunnel. Why? Why would you have a tunnel? Alcatraz prison is a popular tourist attraction. Countless secrets are hidden in between the concrete walls and layers of the prison, and yet recently it has come to light that a mystery has laid latent beneath the infamous tourist location for the past 150 years. Mystery to us? I bet it was known to them. And, and that leads me to my next thing, right? This is now a tourist site, they say. Tourist site now. I ain't going out there, bro. Can you imagine getting stuck on that island and being just stuck in Alcatraz? Like, uh-uh, nope. 
I'll continue to watch videos and tourist videos and clips and everything. Just something about that. And I'm not even on the island just gives me just weird vibes. Researchers recently found something extraordinary beneath the small island. Buildings and tunnels that have since been dated back to the American Civil Conflict of 1861 to 1865. Timothy Desmet, one of the researchers involved with the tunnel's discovery and an archaeologist of the University of Binghamton, has stated, I was surprised for several reasons. The remains of these historical archaeological features were just a few centimetres beneath the surface, and they were miraculously and impeccably preserved. The concrete veneer of the recreation yard floor is incredibly thin, and, in fact, in places sitting directly atop the architecture from the 1860s. The archaeology team did not proceed to dig the historical site up, as that would have quite possibly ruined the entire underground structure. Now they don't want to dig it up for structural purposes. No. You don't want to uncover what's, what went on down there. That's how I feel. That's what my thought process is, bro. Because then you got a lot of questions to answer if stuff starts coming out about Alcatraz. Uh -uh. I always thought it was weird that you would have a prison on an island just like this. I always thought that was weird. But watch as we continue to age and get older, the more information that starts to come out about it. What they did instead of digging was to use the latest technology, a ground penetrating laser radar to obtain detailed scans of the islands underground. Then the team used period authentic maps of Alcatraz to determine what lies beneath the prison island. Timothy Desmet proceeded to explain what his team discovered in the findings. We also learned that some of the earthwork traverses were covered over with thin concrete layers through time, likely to decrease erosion on the rainy, windy island. It was wonderful to find the history just beneath our feet that we can visualize for the public. What the team discovered specifically were the residues of buried buildings described by the archaeologists as bombproof, so to speak. The tunnels are constructed of vaulted brick masonry with ventilation ducts meant for making them breathable the kind of tunnel you might have to stay in for a prolonged amount of time. The east-west tunnel ran directly beneath the prison's recreation yard, as previously stated. Many people are unaware of Alcatraz's role as a 19th century fornication for military personnel during the era of the 1849 gold rush, civil conflict and even the time period of the widespread manifest destiny. The tunnels come from Alcatraz's time as a military base, and remnant buildings from this time remain on the 50-acre island. The clandestine underground was created to protect San Francisco from invasions. Despite us knowing what existed prior to the building of the prison, before this discovery we lacked the specific knowledge of what the island was like. All our data came from past documents and a limited number of artefacts that remained from the pre-prison era of Alcatraz. These tunnels can shed an incredible amount of light on what inhabiting this mysterious island might have been like before its dark prison history. Same thing we were saying. John Martini, a historian who has dedicated his life to uncovering more about Alcatraz stated, this really reinforces what several historians and archeologists had long suspected. Up until this point, we had nothing to go on except for a few visible trace remains and maps and a lot of suspicion. On a small island, there's only so many places you can build. The existence of such structures was contemplated by archaeologists in the past, but they lacked the means to prove it. Now the team hopes that the technique they used could be used in other places around the world or historical landmarks they are unable to dig up. In the words of Desmet, these results are significant in that they show how modern technology can be used to answer fundamental questions of archaeological importance. But what do you make of these incredible discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community. What I think, Alcatraz, they got some history, all right. <laughs> it, 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 it's got some history. And you can't tell me them tunnels underground. They know. They, it's no way they don't know. You took over a, a military base or whatever it is before you built the prison and you didn't know that stuff was down there, you expect me to bl Come on, man. Come on now. That just, to me, makes y'all look even more suspicious. Hmm. 
But like I said, it'll all come out and we're just gonna wait and see, you know? That's all we can do. But y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know what you think and uh, stick around and stay tuned. Leave a like. Till next one, I'm gone. Peace.